Hello everyone, today we are going to see a new poem, No Men Are Foreign, written by James Falconer Kirkup. He was a poet, playwright, novelist and a traveler. James started writing haikus and tankas, but went on to writing prolifically in the English literature. He wrote over 30 books, including autobiographies, novels and plays. Kirkup wrote his first book of poetry, The Drowned Sailor at the Downs, which was published in 1947. His hometown of South Seals now holds a growing collection of his works in the Central Library and artifacts from his time in Japan are housed in the nearby museum. His last volume of poetry was published during the summer of 2008 by Red Squirrel Press and was launched at a special event at Central Library in South Seals. This poem is a memory poem. Before moving to the poem, let's have a, some idea about it. Have you ever thought of some people as strange or other countries as foreign? We have many ways to think of other people as different from us as them. They may belong to a different country or speak a different language. In this poem, however, the poet reminds us of the many ways in which we are all the same for we are all human. As we move to the title of the poem, No Men Are Foreign, means that the no men belong to another country. The poet wants to say that all men are same, all men are equal. He wants to promote the concept of universal brotherhood. In this poem, the poet wants to tell us that everyone in this world is same. All people, all men are same. They eat, love, die the same way. Everyone gets the bounties of nature like sunshine, land, etc. in equal measure. We can also say that it is a peace poem. Now, let's move to the poem. Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. Now let's move to the explanation of the poem. Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign. Here, strange means unknown. The poet, by saying so, the poet is attempting to remove the borders from the earth. Then, no country will be foreign. If there is no border, there is no foreign country. We will feel every country as our own land, where there will be no borders. The poet wants to say that the entire earth is one and all people living on earth belong to one human race. Next line. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. Beneath all uniforms, though their outward appearances, the dresses, the attires may vary, but all are human beings. We are human beings are similar. All people live in the earth and breathe in a similar way here uniform also represents the military sources though their uniforms are different uh, belongs to different countries uh, the human being is same the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this the land our brothers walk upon which means that uh, uh, we all we all human being walk upon the same mother earth and uh, after our death we will be buried under the same earth in which we shall lie it means uh, after our death uh, we will be buried in the grave in the same earth now let's move to the paraphrasing of the first stanza we should remember the truth that no one on earth is unknown person no country is different from the country we live in people in different places may wear different kinds of clothes but under the clothes all of them have the same kind of body as we have all of us walk on the same earth and all of us will be buried under the same earth. Now, let's move to the second stanza. They too aware of sun and air and water, 
or fed by peaceful harvest by wars long winter starved their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own now let's move to the explanation of the stanza too they too aware of sun and air and water here they refers to those people who belong to other countries the poet says that nature has given all the bounties to all the people also just like he has given to us everyone gets sunlight air and water god does not differentiate between people from different countries let's move to the next line or fed by peaceful harvest by wars long winter starved here the poet says during the time of harvest they eat to their heart's content and live in peace by wars long winter starved here the starvation experienced during unproductive and harsh winter season describes the want and hunger faced during war time they remain hungry during war like us because food is scarce during winter and also war time their hands are us and in their lines we read their hands are us which means that they to work hard like us with their hands to earn their livelihood and in their lines we read they are lines lines means here destiny their destiny is similar to ours the lines of their hands also show their capacity of doing work like us a labor not different from our own the labor labor means hard work the hard work done by the people who live in other countries is not different in any way from the one that we do let's move to the paraphrasing of the stanza too people in other places have the same feelings like us they feel the presence of sunlight air and water like us at the time of harvest they eat to their hearts content and live in peace they remain hungry during winter when food is scarce they wage wars in winter season their hands resemble our hands they read books like us and work hard like us let's move to the stanza 3 remember they have eyes like us that wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love in every land is common life that all can recognize and understand let's move to the explanation remember they have eyes like us that wake or sleep they here represents the people who are living in the different countries the poet says that we should remember we should keep in mind that the people of other country whom we think to be our enemies have been blessed by god with eyes as us which open when awake and close when we sleep even though the color of the eyes is different from us they do perform the similar function and strength can that can be won by love similarly he has given them strength which we can win through love the poet says that the strength of other people can be won by love and kindness and not by force or war in every land is common life that all can recognize and understand in every land is common life here the poet says that in every country in every land there is one common thing that is life life means all the things that are living they lead the same life like us they feel pain and sorrow similarly next line that all can recognize and understand here and if we can recognize them and if we can understand the feelings of other people and realize that they are like us then there will be no fights or wars between us
Now paraphrasing of the poem. Their eyes are like us, like us they too sleep and wake, like us they strengthen themselves with love and affection. Life is common in every country. We can understand life like everyone in different countries. Let's move to stanza 4. Let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray, condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other. Let's move to the explanation. Let us remember whenever we are told. The poet says that whenever we are asked by our leaders or rulers to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray, condemn. To hate, what are the leaders saying? To hate the people of other countries. We must remember that this hatred would have a negative effect on us. That we shall dispossess, betray, condemn. Dispossess means uh, take somebody's property or land. That is the Betray, betray means deceive. Deceive na droham. Condemn na criticize. That is condemn thirvikirudhu. We would find ourselves cheated as it would deprive us the bliss of universal brotherhood. We would condemn ourselves to a life of enmity and strangeness. Remember, we who take arms against each other, the poet advises us to ignore the direction of the leaders or rulers to hate and exploit others because by doing so, we harm ourselves let's move to the explanation that is paraphrasing of the poem sometimes uh, people arose hatred in our minds such people may ask us to hate the people in other countries if we hate our brothers in other countries we deprive ourselves of ownership we lose everything we will have to bear the evils of blame and betrayal we should not fight with one another never should be indulged in the acts of offense let's move to the fifth stanza it is the human earth that we defile our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no countries strange. Let's move to the explanation. It is the human earth we defile. Defile means spoil. Human earth. Here the poet says that it is the human earth. Human earth is the human world that is comprised of all countries, races, cultures and creeds that we defile. Defile means spoil, pollute the human earth by using arms and wars uh, causes widespread of death and destruction. The poet again reminds us that the war is futile as it spoils the very earth for which we take up arms against each other, for which we are fighting against each other. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence. Our hells of fire, hells of fire means the devastation caused and created by the arms and ammunition used in wars. It spoils Oils the innocence of air. Innocence means the freshness, the purity of air that nature has blessed us. These deadly weapons emit fire and ashes that spread all over and pollute the environment. Outrage means in great anger. This hells of fire in great anger pollutes the innocence of air. Next line of air. That is everywhere our own of air. This robs that uh, devastation caused during war, robs the air of its purity and the world become a more difficult place to live. By going to war, we harm ourselves as much as we harm the enemy.
Let's move to the next line. Remember, no men are foreign and no country strange. It is therefore important not to consider any human being as foreign and any country as strange. We must build mutual respect and trust to each other. Let's move to paraphrasing. By fighting against one another, we spoil the peaceful earth all around us. There is God-given peace and happiness. Our hatred towards our brother makes the earth a hell of fire and ruin the earth. But remember that peace on earth is everyone's right. No country is an alien country. No human being is a stranger to us. If we understand this, peace will prevail. This is a memory poem. Let's revise now to the stanza 1. Remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like us. The land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. They too, aware of sun and air and water, are fed by peaceful harvests. By wars long winter starved, their hands are us, and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own. Remember, they have eyes like us that wake or sleep, and strength that can be won by love. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. Let us remember, whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray, condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other. It is the human earth that we defile. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no countries strange.